April 26 was a large tornado outbreak hitting very close to home with much of the activity centered around eastern Nebraska, western Iowa. Shortly after noon, the Storm Prediction Center issued a mesoscale discussion for the evolving threat with one supercell already forming west of Grand Island. At noon, you could see that supercell out there west of Grand Island in the widespread cloud cover, but notice the temperatures still only in the mid to upper 50s. At 1 p.m. you can see a arc of storms southwest of Lincoln. I'm heading southwest of Omaha, unsure if I'm going to go for those or if I'm going to go west to see what happens out west with that supercell. Because the one southwest of Lincoln, they had a linear look already and wasn't sure if that was going to continue or not. I did continue southwest and at 2 o'clock you now had a supercell approaching Lincoln. But notice the temperatures around Omaha still only around 60 degrees. 3 p.m. is where my video will start. You now have a stout tornado over North Lincoln. Look at Southwest Iowa when you see those 70 degree temperatures in the upper 60s and those strong southeast winds. There's a very favorable area in there, just not real wide. The thing is, I can think of so many big days that look just like this, small but very favorable areas that just produce. Going back a bit to right before Lincoln in my video, you can see before the storms get there, they look kind of linear. That would quickly change. Approaching Lincoln, and we definitely have a couple supercells now, plus that one out in central Nebraska. After briefly going southeast of Lincoln, I backtrack back north to Waverly and sit just west of town right here. Right at this time, at 2.30, I take the following photo and post it on X. Within about 30 minutes, there would be debris falling here. But at the time, I really wasn't expecting much, and I wanted to go check out the gravel road north I saw that I was going to be on in front of this to make sure it wasn't muddy. This gets probably 15 to 20 minutes closer, and then I move, and within about 10 minutes, it's planted in my rear view mirror. Right around now, the tornado is right on the interstate, just south of where I was. And just make a note here of where that tornado is in the tip of the hook, and how far that gap is between where that is and the core. It'll be a lot smaller in a while. That's impressive.
looks so gnarly way up here to the right though. The next one is going to be way closer. So during that last bit there, you can probably hear me snapping photos. I was taking a big pano so you could really see this whole structure and what we're really looking at. I can't remember if I actually missed one here, but I don't really think so. Basically, we had the uh, Waverly one here, and then the next one here, and the third one I'm about to film here. And then it was like the whole storm got cut in half, and then the big one later, Elkhorn, wraps up from this area. And remember that hook on radar where I said, look how far down Waverly is from the core? You can kind of see how that would be the case here. The tip of that thing was way down there, elongated. And then in a while here, you'll see the massive difference when it's curled up near the core. Instead of dropping down to get closer to this last one, I should have kept with this lead part and been ahead of it at Elkhorn. But nope. Here we go. I mean, they're so far down in the storm, it's hard to get used to. Just notice this bird taking a scenic route by this tornado right before I press stop. At this point, that last tornado shriveled up pretty fast, but the whole structure seemed to vanish from my perspective. I couldn't see much that told me a whole lot. And I guess I kind of thought that cold air was still in place there. I didn't hadn't been looking. Plus the others going up to the south, so I just kind of stopped and trying to figure out what I'm gonna do next. The other thing here was the river. I turned the red outlines for the counties on so just so you can see that squiggly line right there is the river. You couldn't go east. You either had to go back to Ashland where those new storms were going up or drive up in the middle of the rain on this one. It just made more sense to drop back south. But watch how rapidly this changes. This next radar image is only eight minutes later and surely that northern portion of that storm base was more involved now. You now had the beginnings of what would become extremely rapid strengthening in a long-lived strong tornado moving through western Omaha, Elkhorn towards Blair. You have the strong couplet and instant wedge towards Elkhorn, but just look at the wind field away from it increasing rapidly. I decided to sit at Ashland watching my phone as this thing now had its eyes set on home. Now north of Elkhorn in Omaha, you have a very scary radar representation heading towards Blair. I started to think maybe it would miss Blair, but just barely, but I wasn't so sure about my parents' house just south of town. I was trying to explain to my dad that this was a real deal and it's going to be very close and it doesn't look like it's going to stop anytime soon. I'd be like, I think it's going to miss you, but then I'd get another radar scan and be like, man, I don't know, that's going to be close. The track ended up being just one half mile away from their house. And here's satellite again from about the same time, 4 o'clock. And to think, it was in the middle 50s only three hours before this. And this storm would continue to produce tornadoes well north into Iowa. So those middle 50s got shoved well north out of the way by those upper 60s to around 70. Not much later and not far over into Iowa, you had two more substantial tornado producing supercells crossing I-80. So earlier I said to take note of the elongated nature of the hook during the Waverly tornado compared to later. It's so very far from the core during Waverly there, compared to Blair Elkhorn there. It's way more wrapped up later on. 